Musicians Corner on Timeless and Irish with Billy Donegan. Today I'm joined by Elle Marie O'Dwyer from Fremont. Uh, welcome to Musicians Corner. Uh, thanks for having me, Billy. So tell us, where did the love of music and singing come from? Um, I suppose I always count myself very lucky, uh, Billy. As well, I always count myself lucky that I come from Fremont in County Cork. But uh, most especially when it comes to music, because a lot of your listeners will know that Fremont is, I suppose, a real stronghold of traditional Irish music, and there was always music around, um, even at home as well. Uh, the radio would always have been on. Uh, my father sings. Now I suppose he wouldn't sing professionally or anything like that, but he was always singing at home. I suppose the first place that I ever sang, my first audience were the cows in the milking parlour at home. <laughs> I always joke about that, and they never complain either I can tell you um, but like that there was always music being sung or music being played Radio Kerry was always on at home and uh, when I went to primary school then um, Con Herbert many of your listeners will know of Con as well um, Con was the principal in Fremont and it was his thing in school I suppose that nobody left Fremont National School without an instrument in their hand so I was actually I suppose a musician before I was a singer really essentially um, I played the tin whistle from about five or six years of age and then moved on to the fiddle after that and then when I was, um, I was in my final year in Fremont and Khan decided there was a bit of a voice there and he called Mam in and he said, is there any chance you take her to traditional singing lessons uh, down in West Limerick in Kalidi, Rohina, Ashford area, where Khan is originally from. And uh, I went down, it was Deirdre Scanlon from Mona Gay that was giving the classes and uh, Mam always laughs that when I came out, I was skipping coming out of the class. I absolutely just, I fell in love with traditional singing that night and uh, yeah, I've been singing since really, you know. And uh, where, at what point then did you decide to take it uh, well, really seriously? Really seriously. Well, I suppose the idea of the traditional singing lessons was that, you know, the next step after the lessons was to enter competitions. And I was extremely competition driven as, as a younger singer. Um, I suppose I did an awful lot of score, an awful lot of flaz, and comes with that, I suppose, when you're singing in those competitions, comes with the old, old ballads. And those were the songs that I was singing at the time. And like I say, flaz scores, I, I had quite a bit of success in them growing up. And um, was it in 2009? Um, I won the senior score. 2011 was the senior All-Ireland. And uh, I suppose a, a cute Cork one when I decided, you know, if I, if I keep competing now, there's only one way and that's to go down. <laughs> so I decided, no, we'll hang up the boots now and finish the competing. And um, I suppose I was kind of left then with what's, what's the next step after this? You know, the competitions are done. Uh, what could I do next? And I decided to go recording. And uh, as the fellow says, the rest is history. <laughs> and to, to date you have recorded, is it three albums? Three albums to date, yeah. So the first was in 2012. That was where the Aloe Waters flow. And I always am thankful that I called the album that. It was a song that was written by Con Herbert. I've mentioned him already. And I suppose I wouldn't be here sitting in front of you um, and, and, and talking to your listeners as well if it wasn't for Con. So I I'm glad that I did that. That was um, the first album in 2012 for the Yellow Waters Flow. Very traditional album, the old, old ballads where my roots were. Um, the second album kind of followed suit as well. And uh, A Roving Heart, that was recorded in 2013. And the last album was 2017 um, on a day like this. A bit of a change from the other two. Um, but I, I, I'm, I suppose I'm, I'm, a, I'm comfortable with that because I think as a singer you have to be you know, um, you can't be doing the same thing all of the time. And my repertoire has changed as the years have gone on. And even since COVID, I would say my repertoire has completely changed as well. I'm singing songs now that 10 years ago when I recorded the first album, you most certainly wouldn't have heard me singing. But, um, you know, I think if you keep doing the same thing, Billy, you're going to keep getting the same results and you have to be fluid and you have to change. And, you know, I'm, I'm glad I did. Now, the first song we're going to play today is uh, Brave Island. And this is a song you actually wrote yourself. That's right. So how did Brave Island come about? <laughs> so uh, I suppose I'd never have considered myself a songwriter in any shape or form. Um, I did the Masters in Irish Traditional Music in the University of Limerick in 2016, it was. Um, and I suppose with that, we got opportunities to do different things, to sing different songs, meet different people and... Um, songwriting was something that I suppose kind of cropped up um, a little bit and the following year I was singer in residence in County Clare and it's a long old road from uh, North Cork to some of the most westerly parts of, of County Clare so to occupy my time I used to kind of be coming up with ideas for songs and I suppose you know now that I've written a few more I think for you to write a song it has to be something that means something to you there's no point in writing a song if you're not speaking from your heart really um, and that's where the idea of Brave Ireland came came about so uh, anybody that I suppose has tuned into my Facebook lives online for the last couple of months or anybody that knows me will know I, I'm quite a proud person 
and of where I come from and, and my culture and everything else. And there's two people that have instilled that in me. And one of them will be my own father, Sean, and the other I've mentioned him already. And he always comes up in any interview that I do. I suppose it just goes to show the influence he's had on me, uh, Con Herbert. But they instilled in us, I suppose, a love for um, where we came from our culture, our sport, keeping Ireland to the front and keeping everything that makes us Irish to the front. And that's the sentiment in the song of Brave Ireland. So it tells the story of a man who's on his deathbed who has fought for Ireland and he asks his daughter to make sure that everything he has done and his comrades have done in the fight for, for Ireland to make sure that it's not in vain, to keep cu our culture, our music, our sport, our language, everything that makes us Irish to keep it to the front. And that's where I suppose the idea of, of the baby, as I like to call it, Brave Ireland came from. There we go. That is uh, Brave Ireland. They're sung by uh, sung and indeed written by Elmarie O'Dwyer, who is our guest today. 
Now, you've been a firm favourite on the Radio Kerry concerts for the past few years and also on the Irish Rambling House. Yes, yeah, the Irish Rambling House. I suppose last year and before COVID hit, um, I was lucky enough to take a trip at the Rambling House, but it wasn't my first time. Uh, I went to the Rambling House as a teenager as well. Uh, great, great memories of, of being with Joe um, Harrington and Kay, of course, and travelling uh, many of the spots in England as a teenager. And it was just lovely to be able to go back um, as one of the, I won't say one of the older crew now, I wouldn't like to call myself old or anything like that, Billy, but I suppose one of the more mature crew <laughs> this time around. Um, and I suppose you look at things from a different perspective when you're older. Um, and I often say, you know, I did cultist tours and rambling house tours and things when I was a teenager. And not that I regret that I was so young, but I suppose you just take things for granted when you're that age. You know, you think, oh, this is going to be it forever. I'm going to be doing this kind of thing forever. And, and, you, and you do end up taking them for granted. You don't realise, I suppose, how special it is to be on them. Um, so to be able to get the opportunity to go again now, um, that little bit older was fabulous. We had a most brilliant crew. Um, like I say, I've done several tours and I have to say it was one of the nicest crews that, that I ever toured with. There wasn't a crossword while we were away overseas, um, you know, and there was great crack on stage as well. And we had, it wasn't just on stage, we had we had great fun off the stage as well. And I think that's the makings of a group. If a group like that can gel off stage, well, then they're definitely going to gel on stage. And, you know, audiences, we have to give them credit. They can pick up on an atmosphere very, very quickly, I have found from performing. Um, so when the atmosphere is right, they will relax as well and they will enjoy the show and I think that that was the case in every show that we did in England. Um, I know that we had plans to do shows in Kerry and, and elsewhere um, but of course COVID, COVID hit and those those shows went astray but hopefully we'll be back doing them um, again very shortly. Uh, likewise with the Radio Kerry concerts as well of course Billy and uh, a big thank you to you and to everybody in Radio Kerry for having had me on those concerts. I suppose I had got to a point um, a couple of years ago where you know, doing the Radio Kerry concerts was another step for me in my in my career to get that opportunity to perform with some of the bigger bands. Um, it's no, I suppose, surprise to anybody, but Sean Kane will be one of my idols, has been since I was a child. And I remember the first Radio Kerry concert I did, Sean was in it as well. And honestly, Billy, <laughs> it made it made my year to be involved in the same concert as Sean. And I'm glad to be able to call him a friend now because we've performed many times together since and uh, and that. But it was it was a step for me, I suppose. You know, the, the, the new album in 2017 was being released, and uh, the next step was the Radio Kerry concert, and it was it was it was it was fabulous to be able to do. It and, and to be able to do so many synths as well and hopefully please God it won't be long before we're, we're back doing them again. Now Covid of course has put pay to all live performances but you have moved online to Facebook where you have been very active. Very active indeed yeah I suppose I'll say the unpopular thing now and the thing that you're not supposed to say but last March when Covid hit and the first lockdown happened um, I actually enjoyed the start of the lockdown I have to say for the first couple of weeks I, I really enjoyed the downtime um, things had gone, had gotten to be extremely busy. I'm a primary school teacher by day and that's an extreme, although many wouldn't think it, <laughs> that is an extremely busy job in itself. And uh, I was teaching singing then three nights a week. There were weddings, there were funerals, gigs, concerts, workshops, the lot. And it had kind of got to a point, and I suppose as well, look, you know, I, I do consider myself to be quite young and I suppose there was a social life to try and keep going as well. And it had gotten to a point where I was enjoying nothing anymore because everything was taking from everything else and it was just, it had gotten really busy. And then COVID hit and um, yeah, it just, it all stopped and there was nowhere to be. There was no rushing and racing or, you know, I didn't have to be somewhere at a certain time. And it was lovely for the first couple of weeks. I really enjoyed it. Uh, but when I say the first couple of weeks, the novelty started to wear off then after about a month. I kind of, I think we all realised that we're in this now for the long haul. This isn't just the couple of weeks that we initially thought it was going to be. This is, you know, a kind of a, a semi-permanent situation for, for a while. And I suppose the anxiety and the panic kind of hit as to, I've been working at this now for a good few years and is it all going to go for nothing? If, you know, I suppose, essentially, if you're kind of you're forgotten, you know, if you don't keep yourself out there and, and keep yourself active. And I had been watching Facebook Lives. A lot of my friends were doing them and I suppose a lot of the bigger bands were doing them as well. I know of a Saturday night, myself and my husband, Tim, we nearly had a schedule going of what concerts to watch and at what time we used to work the takeaway in around the, <laughs> the, the Facebook Live concerts. They used to keep us going, but it was never something that I saw myself doing, um, most especially because I can't back myself. And the idea of backing tracks was something that was totally alien to me. Um, I'm not... I suppose I, I'm a traditional singer. It's not really something that we 
we'd ever do um, to have backing track. So it was just an alien idea to me. It wasn't something that I thought of myself. Several people had got in contact with me to see what I do with them. And the seed was being planted. And I remember going home one evening and kind of saying, you know, I don't know, will I have to do them like? I think I need to do them for myself more than anything else. And I'd say they were so sick of listening to me at home, going on about how much I needed to be back on the stage that they said, go for it and see how you get on. And sure, look, if it, if it doesn't work, nothing ventured, nothing gained, just see how it goes. And I knew the minute I had decided to do it, that it was the right decision because automatically my, my mood changed. Um, there was something to work for. There was something to work towards. And for two or three weeks, it was getting backing tracks together and it was getting um, bits and pieces together and deciding what I was going to sing and advertising and all of those bits and pieces. And um, the first live went down really well. It was received really well. Now, I will say it was probably one of the most daunting things I have done in my singing career to date in the sense that it is so it's such a strange experience you know you could you turn on your phone I, I had never gone live on Facebook to talk not to mind to do a Facebook concert so I didn't really know what to expect and you're looking into a phone and you can see numbers coming in and numbers dropping and numbers getting getting bigger and people commenting and names coming in and you're trying to watch all of that while you're also trying to perform and, and make sure that you're putting sentiment into your songs while also making sure that the internet stays working and also making you know there's so much involved in a Facebook Live that you wouldn't have if you were on a stage. Um, and it did take a while to get used to it, but um, I suppose I stuck at it and after the second or third live, I was I was hooked completely. Um, now, I will say, you know, it's probably the opposite now. On the flip side, I'll find it hard to go in front of a live audience <laughs> again <laughs> because, and people can't see this and I'm giving away my secrets now, but behind the camera, like there are a lot of safety nets. So there's lyrics and there's set lists and there's lighting and there's all these bits and pieces that, that won't be there when we get back onto, onto a live stage. But God, we can't wait for that day. But only for social media, I, I, I think I would have cracked up, Billy, to be honest. It has kept me going. The only other place I could perform was the church and it has taken my music to a whole new audience. Um, of people you know we've had listeners in from New Zealand South America South Africa now mind you we've also had listeners in from Ballybunion and, and other places like that too exotic places like that too um, but it has it has reached a whole new audience and I'm, I'm delighted with that Now your current release is Roll Back the Clouds Since I was a, a teenager um, I've listened to Christy Hennessy's music but uh, most especially in the last couple of years I have completely fallen in love with Christy's music Um I suppose he's an idol of mine and it's it's something that will never be able to happen now but I would have done anything to have been able to number one meet the man <laughs> uh, but most especially to perform with him I just love the sentiment in his songs and the way he gets them across and he was such a humble person as well and you know so so talented but let none of it get to get to go to his head or, or affect his personality in any way um, and I suppose the song that I chose to record was Roll Back the Clouds and it's very much a song that I can connect with myself you're working hard you're trying to get the name out there and trying to get your music to as many people as possible and God knows there have been knocks along the way. Uh, I suppose nobody's path is straight, but there have been a lot of twists and turns. And I think that the sentiment in that song really gets that across. So uh, that's why I recorded it. I have known my highs 
highs and lows I've worked in every show I've played in every town And brought some houses down And the critics never notice me For I am not a star you see But yet I give my heart to every part I would stand for hours and hours I'd walk through sun and showers With my dancing shoes And my dreams and views I'd walk upon an empty stage With one light in my face to be told, don't phone us, nobody will phone you. clouds there, the latest release from El Marie O'Dwyer. We have to make that a special request for Charles from Belly Longford who is absolutely in love with the song. Finally uh, El Marie, is there anyone you want to say hello to or thank or? Um, I suppose if I go mentioning names I could get into trouble Billy, <laughs> so I wouldn't like to You definitely will. <laughs> to go mentioning names but I suppose just to say a huge thank you to everybody that has supported me during Covid um, it has been a tough time on everyone um, I know that it has, been, it has been an extremely tough time on us in the music industry it will be the last thing to come back we know that um, but you know Facebook lives and social media and all of those things have kept us going um, over the last couple of months but there would have been no point in performing those and, and I do know that there has been a big listenership in from Kerry because Kerry people leave, make sure that they leave themselves known <laughs> so anytime there was a Facebook live uh, I'd always know that they were listening in and uh, that's hugely important because there's no point in me doing these Facebook lives or going online if nobody's watching them um, so to say a big thank you for supporting my music um, a lot of people have thanked me for doing them but I I say thank you to everybody who has listened because um, it has got me through hopefully we are through it and that the lockdowns are finished and that we are on the way out uh, with the vaccines and everything else but a huge Gaurav Mahagat to everybody who has who has listened in because there would have been no point in doing them Billy if nobody was listening in and uh, I look forward to meeting all of them when we are able to and hopefully that day isn't too far away at all Musicians Corner on Timeless and Irish with Billy Donegan